everybody wave if you can hear me. Hello. Uh, welcome to our virtual uh, Zoom painting class. I'm really excited to do this. I have been a little bit about myself. I've been teaching at Sippin' and Painting for um, close to four years now. Uh, my background is uh, fine arts, graphic design. I'm also a face painter. I've been a cake decorator. I've been a tattoo apprentice. Um, so basically anything that has to do with art, I've tried it and um, I am absolutely just in love with doing anything that has to do with the creative arts. So I'm really happy to be here with you guys today. Um, thanks for trying this out. I know that this is a little different than what we're used to, but we're going to have a great evening and we're all safe at home, which is wonderful. You do not have to put on your face mask right now, so go ahead and put that off to the side. Um, if you have a glass of wine or a a beer or a non-alcoholic drink that you want to enjoy, please do so. At any point in the class, if you need to get up and, you know, um, go refresh your drink or just stretch, just do that. You don't have to ask or feel like you're going to miss anything. Um, you guys just um, do what you need to do and then jump right back in. Um, this class will be simple enough that you will not fall behind. Um, I also will encourage you, if, if you are comfortable um, throughout the class, I would love for you all to hold your paintings up and show everybody what you've done. I think that's really important. Uh, as Nancy said, if you don't have everything um, as far as supplies, use what you have, all right? Be resourceful. I feel like this is a time in our uh, history where we're all sort of being resourceful in one way or another, and you can absolutely do that when you get um, when you're doing something creative. So um, I have a palette already ready here, so I've got my primary colors plus black and white. Okay. Um, I hope that you can see my canvas. I'll try to scooch up a little bit closer. Um, maybe I'll angle it down. Is that better? Thumbs up if that's better. Okay, awesome. Um, and I will walk you through this step by step. Uh, improvise when needed. Um, I am going to use three paint brushes for this particular painting here. Uh, so I've got a large brush, a medium, and a small. All right, so I'm just gonna hold those up so that you can see. I mean, not a huge difference between them. Um, hold on one second, that's not my small, here we go. So there we go. So large, medium, and small, that's what I'll be using. I also have a tub of water. So any container that you have that you don't really care about, um, please grab one and make sure that you have some water. And uh, also really important to have some paper towels. So I've got some here. You can also use an old t-shirt or an old dish rag. That works as well. Um, I've covered my countertops with some plastic because I don't want to make a mess here. Um, and I feel like you're all prepped, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first thing we're going to do is I'm going to start off with the background color. So let's just take a look at our original here. So you'll see that there's a lot going on here, right? You've got a nice sky. You got all these really beautiful summer flowers here, and then you've got aspen trees, which are you know very uh, native to Colorado. They just kind of spring up like weeds, and they grow together. They're really beautiful. Um, so you have that nice contrast of the black and white trees against a really beautiful Colorado sky and a lot of wildflowers. Okay, so we are going to um, start with the sky, and. If you have a canvas my size, great. If you're painting on something smaller, you just scale everything down um, to uh, whatever your uh, surface is. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just going to prime my canvas. I'm gonna wet my canvas with water and I'm just gonna go back and forth. I like to do this step because it just sort of, you know, preps you for paint. It makes you comfortable with the brush. You'll feel the way the brush feels against the canvas. And also water is very important because acrylic paint, which is what I'm using here today, it's a water-based paint. And it's really nice because it thins out well with water. Um, so you can change the consistency a little bit. And you can also, um, it, it dries much faster when you add water to it. Just be careful too much and your painting's going to cry. We don't want any more crying, yes? Okay, so we're going to take a little bit of blue and we are going to mix it with white. Okay, so take a look here. I want to drop this on my laptop, but 
see I have blue and white on one big brush. And this is how I, I love to do my sky because it creates a very unpredictable um, and unique uh, effect. All right, so I kind of like the surprise element of it. So I'm just going to go in and go side to side here. And I'm just gonna create all these really beautiful tones of blue and white. And I'm not over mixing, so I'm being very careful not to over blend. So I'm just going side to side. I have this nice contrast of blue and white. So that creates the effect of clouds. That's what I want it to feel like. So again, I'm gonna pick up more blue and white and go side to side. So uh, you might be asking, how far down am I gonna go with these two colors? So if you look at the original, it's about one third of the way down, okay? So if you imagine your canvas being three parts, one, two, three, that's how far you wanna go down, okay? Um, also, if you're working on a stretched canvas, which means it has these sides on it, go ahead and paint those the same color. Carry that over to each side and to the top. All right, so go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna make some minor adjustments while you're painting so you have um, optimal viewing here. So just keep working while I make some minor adjustments, okay? So go ahead and do one whole third of your canvas. Scooch it in just a little bit. If you feel like that paint's a little bit dry and you want to add just a little water, you can do that. I'll just take my brush, tiny bit of water, just a little bit. That's going to get your paint moving again. Acrylic paint is like us. It needs to be hydrated. So don't forget to give it a little water now and then. I'm just going over the sides of my canvas with my big brush here. So I do this last after I paint the surface, then I go in and paint the sides because I want the front to dry. So do this last. That gives your um, surface a little time to dry. Good job, artists. I see you hard at work. While you're all working on that, um, 
just want to let you know that we are making plans to reopen and uh, just please stay tuned follow us on on facebook i'll come down here so you can see my face hello um, follow us on facebook on instagram um, and also check out our website sipping and painting hand in uh, for all the latest updates and all the wonderful things that we are um, hoping to offer all of you very soon so thank you for being patient through all of this uh, we are as eager for the world to open up as you are so um, we will absolutely keep you posted all right looking good i'm seeing some nice things good job denise i like it all right awesome danielle beautiful emily oh i love it looks good i like that one down there very good katrina nice sky i like your contrast cami mm -hmm. i like that deep blue looks good thank you thanks for showing me excellent all right beautiful all right all right so now that we've gotten the sky um what i want to sort of focus on next here let's hold up our original here we go so we're gonna let the sky dry all right we're gonna start adding in some of these flowers that are in the foreground okay so let's look at our colors that we have in the flowers we've got yellow orange we've got some purple in there we've got um, some green so basically here's where you can have some fun and you can decide which color you want to add more of maybe you're a huge fan of yellow so you want to you know do a whole lot more yellow or you like the light green so here's where you can get creative and really customize it to your liking okay so i'm just going to hold that up so you can all see that for a moment i'm going to start off with the lightest color which would be the yellow flowers okay so here's what i like to do after i use a brush i give my brush a little bath i just put them in the um, water jar okay so it's really important that you take care of your brushes and they take care of you but you have to remember to keep them in the water when you're not using them um, i am very guilty of forgetting to do this at home when i'm painting and i'll find my paintbrush the next day that i spent 25 dollars on and it's as hard as a rock so don't forget to do this you don't want to ruin your brushes all right so just drop them in the water and they're happy All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my medium brush. If you have one of these, this is great, or you can also use um, a smaller brush. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're just going to add the flowers like this. So what I'm doing is I'm just pressing into my hand, which is playing canvas, <laughs> okay? So this is what you're gonna do on the canvas. So a couple things to avoid, don't, do the same pattern over and over okay so we're very much creatures of uh repetition we like to see patterns but in nature you'll see that even though there's some order there there's also some nice chaos so i want you to be a little chaotic with your brush so it's not dot 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 it's all over give me a thumbs up if that makes sense all right excellent so go into uh a little bit of water first, get my brush wet, and then I'm going to pick up some yellow. I love yellow, so I think I'm going to really play up the yellow here. I'm just going to put this off to the side here, and so there's a nice big area of yellow over here. So again, I'm just dotting this on. And I'm not making any shapes in particular. You know, you really want to just think a random shape, right? And then let it, let it taper off a little bit here, but get a nice big body of yellow going there. Then I will pick up some more and I'm going to add some up here where my sky sort of finishes here. So I'm just going to add 
a little bit of yellow in here. And if you could see my computer, or excuse me, if you could see my, um, if you can see this on your screen, whatever it is you're watching on, you might notice that that blue is showing up underneath the yellow, and that's okay. We're gonna layer a lot, so don't get too caught up with that. But also notice what happens. It creates green, so that's nice. I like that, so now, if you want to try that and just kind of add a little bit of that greenish color to the top where your sky ends, that's a nice way to do that. All right, so I'm going to continue adding small uh, blocks of yellow throughout my painting. Um, make sure that you move around and, you know, you repeat them, but just not in a perfect pattern. All right, so go ahead and do that. Give you all a few minutes to create your yellow flower patches. Just a couple things too. If you have um, sheets of paper and you run out of space on your palette, I love to use all kinds of random things as my palette. Uh, sometimes when my kids are done with a box of cereal, I will actually use the, the um, cereal box, flatten it out um, and use that as my palette, the glossy side, because they put a gloss coating over cereal boxes, which is really nice so your paint doesn't sink in. Um, so, you know, I've used foil, so if you need to, you've run out of space on your palette or you want to mix a new color, you can use a little bit of foil as a palette. Um, and uh, basically anything that isn't going to be super porous is the best, um, but even a sheet of paper, if you add water to your um, paint, you'll be able to um, mix colors on your, on your sheet of paper there. All right, will you wave at me if you need a little more time? All right, awesome. I will hold this up so that you can all see. I'll give you a couple more minutes to get your yellow on there.
Okay, so the next uh, color that I want to use, you sort of want to go in order when you're painting something like this, uh, sort of following the order of the rainbow, but I like to start off with the um, lighter color. So say yellow, I would use orange next. Then if you're going to use red, I would use red next. And then you can start transitioning into your cooler colors with um, for your flowers. So the next color that I'm going to use is going to be orange. So um, I've got my red and yellow next to each other on my palette, but if you don't, that's okay. Um, so you can scoop up a little bit of yellow and a little bit of red, find a blank spot on your, uh, on your palette, or use a sheet of paper or whatever scraps you can find at, around your house to mix those. Um, so I will use, I'm going to use a little bit of foil. Just to show you how I would do it. So I'd add a little bit of yellow and then less red. Red is extremely dominant in pigment. So you can see me mixing mostly yellow and a little red. It's still very Denver Broncos orange, which is beautiful, right? But if you want to go lighter, you're going to need way more yellow. See the difference? Adding that yellow really makes a big difference. So even lighter. All right. So I've used my entire brush mixing this and now I've got way too much paint on my brush. So I'm just gonna scooch it off. I don't wanna add that much paint to my canvas. So I just kind of get some of that off. Is scooch a technical word, Vanessa? I, uh, <laughs> yes, that's an art school term. Absolutely. Scooch it a scout. A scosh, a scooch, a smidge, a teensy bit uh, over. Yeah, all that. So I just wanted to say real quick, if you, uh, you're all muted, but if you want to unmute yourself, you can do that. You have the power, uh, but then just mute yourself after your question, if you will, okay? Thank you. Oh yeah, so please, if you have questions, um, what I've done here is uh, I'm starting to add my orange and notice I'm overlapping a little bit on top of my yellow, okay? But yeah, I don't want to make, um, I don't want to cover my yellow entirely, but I do want it to sort of overlap. Like the, the flowers are growing right next to each other and they're two different colors, but they're sort of intertwined in this nice way. So I'm not covering it all up, but I am just enhancing those little patches with the orange and extending it out a little. Here's another fun thing you can do. Um, if you wanted to, you could, uh, when you add a little bit of that orange, I've just put my brush into some red and look at how nice and dark that gets. If you want to add a tiny bit of red in there, that's going to give you a really nice bold little patch there. Um, I caution you though, if you use a lot of this red, you might want to clean your brush um, just so that you're not getting your orange too dark. So go ahead and clean it off and start over with your orange mixture. But I just wanted to show you all the different variations that you can do with um, yellow and red and all these beautiful colors in between. And my, uh, my husband just got home from work, so if you saw him walk by. Hi, husband. Hi, husband, everybody says. <laughs> I have kicked him out of the house for uh, the rest of this class, so he's outside on the porch having a beer with a neighbor. Also, I had to put my cat in another room because my cat would have 100% guarantee walked on my paint palette. He loves paint. My class says hello. 
My husband's a little jealous. <laughs> Does he, would he like a beer? <laughs> I could be doing anything but this. Oh, <laughs> yes. We really enjoy our, uh, our jobs, we're, we're fortunate. And you know, painting is something that I think a lot of people are intimidated by it because it sounds like it's such a daunting task, but um, I think that you'll find that you can easily set up a little paint corner or um, you know, do a little paint session if you need to unwind or just you know, sort of enjoy getting away from the TV and your phones. This is a really, really great um, hobby and pastime to disconnect from a lot of the stuff that's going on in the world and just, you know, engage your mind in a totally different way. So good for all of you for doing this. All right, so you'll notice every little patch of yellow, I want to give it some orange. I really, really love those two together. It just makes so much sense. And maybe on this little patch here, I'm not going to use as much of the red. I just want to keep it a little bit lighter, a little more fresh. I'm going to give you a couple more minutes to apply your orange. If you went too orange, don't worry. Acrylic paint is really nice in the fact that it dries quickly and you can um, go back and cover something up if you need to. So if you feel like you've gone way too far with one color, you can always bring yourself back, just let it dry, and then you can um, cover it up with a, with a different color. So I just wanna show you all my different contrasts here. Um, and then I might add a little bit up here, a little bit of orange. Also, you know, at this point, now you feel what the brush does against the canvas. You can also try doing different techniques like twisting. So here I'm sort of twisting my brush and that's gonna look a little different than dotting it on. Um, if you wanted to do small brush strokes, you'll see that that creates a totally different look. So, you know, with one brush, you can really do a lot of different uh, looks. See, see how that looks completely different, these flowers here. So you can play around with it. And if anybody does have questions, um, yeah, please. This is interactive and I wanna make sure that you um, don't have any questions that are lingering. I'm sure someone else is wondering the same, so don't feel like you're interrupting me. If you wanna ask a question, I encourage it. I made a little mistake here. I accidentally picked up some uh, black or blue and I don't want it there. So I'm just taking a little paper towel and I'm just wiping it away. So feel free to do that if you make a happy little accident. I'm gonna hold up the original just so you can all see for a couple minutes here. I'll say about another minute or so. And then we'll move on to another color. Since this is the last color, I assume they're gonna go darker. If there's any yellow spots we want, we should probably get them now. Um, good question. Yes, you can go in with more yellow if you'd like to. Um, I think that's, uh, that's okay to do. We can also add in some more yellow later. So 
Um, yeah, add some more if you'd like, but I'm going to focus more now on, um, I think I'm going to actually add a little bit of pink to this. I think wow. that the will look really nice. Um, and then we can start going into some more cool tones. A little bit of pink, I think, and then a little bit of uh, purple, too. But yes, good question. You can always add more yellow if, if you feel like your painting needs it. And that, um, you know, brings me to encouraging you to walk away from your painting and look at it from across the room. Because what you see in front of you looks very different than what you see 10 feet away. When you go to an art museum, I encourage you if, if you like to, you know, look at art or to a, a gallery or a show or anything, look at the painting two ways. Look at it up close so you can see the brushwork and all the details and then walk back about 10, sometimes 15 feet away and take it in at that distance. You should do the same for your own artwork. All right, excellent. So the next color that I'm gonna use, um, I love pink and I think that uh, there's so many beautiful pink flowers out in the wild. It's just such a, a happy spring color. So I'm gonna add a little bit of pink to my painting. You can, if you like, or you can skip pink if you're not a fan. You can go in and add more yellow, more orange, more bright red. Um, again, this is your little happy world. So adjust and make it yours. So if I'm going to use pink, I'm going to make sure that I clean my brush. So cleaning your brush is super simple. You just want to, you know, dip it into your paint, uh, your water, and just swirl it around, get all of that paint off. And then you're at home. So if you want to go to your sink and dump out your water and get fresh water, you can do that. You don't have to do it every single color. You can do it every, like, 20, 30 minutes if you'd like, but, um, and then I just wipe off with paper towel all the excess like this. All right, so pink, super easy, simple, same brush. Um, I'm going to start off with some white. You can use my foil or my, uh, if you have another palette, and then I'm just going to add a tiny dot of red. I think this is a good, nice good pink here. And then with this, I'm using just the corner of my brush. Come in a little closer here. So if you push really hard on your brush, which I'll do here so you can see, you get a giant blob, okay? If you go light, and just barely graze the canvas. You're gonna get these really nice, beautiful flowers that look a little more detailed, okay? So it's all about pressure and how much paint you have on your brush. So here I'm just adding in some of these nice pink uh, tones around yellow, around the orange, around the red, just layering it. So let's take a few minutes to do this with the color of your choice. You want a darker pink, you're gonna add way less white. If you want a very, very light, soft pink, it's a more white, okay? So play around with it, have some fun. I really wanna see you all taking a walk and looking at your painting from far away. And then after this step, we'll do show and tell, or show. <laughs> you can tell if you want. You can unmute yourself and give some commentary. And I love when the colors behind it blend in with it. So right now with this light pink, I'm picking up these beautiful um, peach tones because the yellow is still wet. And I like that. I'm liking what's happening.
So at this point, you're going to start your uh, little blobs of flowers are going to start meeting each other. You're going to have way less white space. Maybe I'll add some pink over here. So now they're starting to intersect a little bit. That's what we want. So remember the original, there are no blank spots. It's all painted. So don't be afraid to just go in there and fill in giant blocks of color and flowers. All right. How's everybody doing? Let's do a little show. I want to see your paintings. Oh, wow. Beautiful. Very nice. Good job, Cami, Emily. Yeah, beautiful. Some of you don't have your name, so <laughs> I love it. Love it. Denise. Good job, Denise. Yeah, Katrina, that's really cool contrast. Love that. Really nice. Very cool. Thank you, everyone. Love to see the progress. Excellent. All right. So let's go ahead and let's clean off our medium brush. And if you have blue and red, you can make purple, okay? Just depending 
on what kind of red you have. So some reds have more of a yellow tone and some reds have more of a like magenta tone or purplish tone. So basically whatever kind of red you have will depend on what kind of purple you have. Um, so my purple looks like this. You can see this on my palette. Ooh. Okay, so it's very, it's a very like a uh, dusty plum purple, which I'm okay with. Um, uh, I might not use that color, uh, you know, a lot of it. I, I kind of want to keep it more pink and yellow. So I am going to add a little bit of it, but I'm going to add white to it. So I'm doing white, red, a little bit of blue. See where that gets me. And I'm going to add more white to that. I'm going to go really, really light with it because the lighter it is, the more of a believable purple it is. Um, I think if you don't put white in, it's going to look really muddy. And this is such a bright, um, happy summer scene that I don't want to get it muddy. So see, I'm adding a lot of white. So it's kind of a, a bit of a lavender. I like this. So, and I'm not going to go crazy with it. I just want to use a little bit of this. And what I really want to use it as, kind of a shadow. Maybe it's the shadow of all of the pink flowers. And it just really creates a nice contrast. My brush is getting very flat. So sometimes I like to mess up its hair. Just kind of give it a, a fluff updo there. So then my, there we go. It's hard for you to see it, but now I've got a more fluffy brush stroke here. Just going to add this in a tiny bit. Then we're going to go crazy with green. One of the things I really love about Colorado is how much you appreciate the green when it gets here. Because we have like, I don't know, five months of just brown. Uh, tree trunks, dead grass, nothing's blooming. So right when you, you are absolutely just tired of everything being brown, everything turns super green. And I didn't appreciate that until I lived in um, California and Florida, where it's always green. So you never really even notice it. So I, it was one of the things I love about Colorado. We have such beautiful seasons that you really appreciate each one for what it is. All right, I'll just hold this up.
right, excellent. So what I'd like to do now is I'd like for you to take about a, we'll say, let's take about a seven minute break, okay? So um, we are going to reconvene at 7.32. So call it five minutes and then just take seven, okay? Um, so this is gonna give your painting a chance to dry. If you have questions, now is the time to sort of think about them and then uh, when we come back, I'll give you guys some, uh, some time to ask your questions if you have any. Okay, all right, awesome. So let's take five to seven minutes. And if anybody wants to chat with other people, you can unmute yourself, you have that power. And uh, it would be fun to say hi to everybody. Hey everybody, happy Friday. Who's, um, who's using acrylic and who's using something else? Acrylic Hi, gel. Emily. We're using acrylic. Are we? Who's all painting there, Emily? Is Nick, Nick painting? Right in watercolor. What? Watercolor, huh? You're doing watercolor? Wow. Watercolor? Like yeah, watercolor. Hi, Shushuta. Hi, did I say your name correctly? What are you using? I'm using acrylic and uh, and I'm not from Colorado. My friend signed me up for this. So I was like, why not have a Colorado painting? So mm. yeah, hi, hi Colorado. <laughs> hi, where, where are you from? <laughs> I am in Chicago. I stayed at Chicago. Hello from Denver. Hey, hello all. I, I visit Denver often. My friends <laughs> signed me up for this, so uh, I'm enjoying this. Nice to meet you all. Hey, nice to meet you too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yay. Hmm. Uh, let's mute ourselves, shall we? Danielle, what are you using tonight? I am using the kit that they gave me because I am not creative, typically. So whatever they gave me is what I got. And why is, why is purple so hard to make? You would think that that like would this work, right? Like, right. Uh huh. It does. But see, I think uh, her on hers, hers was kind of a grayish purple too. It's yeah. Supposed to look more like a yeah. shadow. But I like it. I like it. I like the mix of both. Yeah. yeah. I was just curious, like, why didn't it turn out purple? So can I well. give you an answer on that one? Yeah. So I think in your kits, I I put in cobalt blue. Uh, I can show myself so you guys can see. I think as a kid, it was co I gave you cobalt blue. I had to choose one of the blues. Um, we yeah. Have, yeah, we have phthalo blue. We have um, uh, primary blue. We have lots of different blues. And I was looking for a blue that could do many purposes. And so this is really good feedback for me. I will try to find a blue that mixes better with purple to the next time, okay? I mean, with red to make purple. Oh yeah, no problem. I was just like, when I was in the fourth grade, they said red and blue makes purple. And then I'm trying to create it at three, and I'm like, wait, what? No, it doesn't. So every, every shade, well, every, uh, I, I always forget the correct art terms because I didn't go to art school. A lot of the other staff did. Um, but, uh, so there's quite a few different colors of blue. Some are warmer, some are cooler. And this is, the one that you have is a cooler blue. And so when you mix Got it, it's it. more like a gray. Uh, a warmer blue um, or one with more pigment like phthalo would make a more proper purple. So in the future, again, this is good feedback for me. I think I'll pick up, I'll try some uh, phthalo in the kits and see if people have better mixing. Uh, I like it. I like one too. That's cool. Oh, yeah. Looking good. Hey. I need yeah. to have more places filled in, I think. What? Wait and see, because I mean, I, evidently we've got. She's she still had a whole bunch of um, empty spaces on yeah. hers as well. 
Don't oh, panic. <laughs> Good. I was looking in Cammie's house and seeing two of the paintings that she did here. Yes. Cool. Yeah. My husband and my daughter did uh, the, one of the mountain ones, and then all three of us did the um, kind of sunlight uh, shadow tree line one. That was cool. Nice. <laughs> I wonder about the tree light. <laughs> yeah. And the other one's white feet. Oh, I like that. Yeah. That was kind of a fun one. Yeah. The other one. That one's Glacial Lake. Mm-hmm. Very mm. pretty. Nice. We're going to be doing some Bob Ross classes uh, coming up here soon on online, some virtual Bob Ross classes. I'm, I just want to see how this week went. This week was kind of an experiment, and now we've learned a lot, and uh, <laughs> we'll be adding a lot of classes. And then um, uh, within the next week, we'll be posting some in-studio classes as well. Those are going to be really small classes compared to what people are used to. Um, so we'll have online and in-studio options. And we might even, I mean, we can uh, actually have them going at the same time, which is kind of fun. Okay. Actually, here, just put that toward the middle because I'll need it later. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm doing these free. <laughs> this is my first time and I'm having a ball. So, yeah. thank you. Thanks for being here. Ooh. Awesome. Yes, thank you for, for joining us. Is there anybody out there who's never painted before? Like, this is kind of your first go at it? You've all done it before at least once? Me. <laughs> me and you? Yeah, me. Linda's first time. Oh, good. Excellent. What do you think? It's fun. Good. And it's amazing how you can actually make it look like something. <laughs> right, like something, uh, yeah. Something, yeah, instead of like a kindergarten. <laughs> yeah. Art imitates life. Is there anybody out there celebrating? If you want to do a toast, we can. I've got my it's little... It's my birthday tomorrow. I told my husband I want to be in the basement. You take care oh. of the kids. I'm going to paint and drink. So that's why I'm in the basement with the cat. Yeah. Awesome. It's Danielle? Yeah. It's your birthday? Oh, good. Happy birthday, Danielle. <laughs> Cheers. 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 It was my birthday yesterday. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, that's my son's birthday. Excellent. Lots of birthdays. <laughs> Happy birthday to all of you. All right. Well, it's not such a bad Friday night, right? Mm -hmm. it's fun. Nobody has to drive home. <laughs> has to pay a tab. <laughs> so good. I'm glad. Excellent. All right. <laughs> What's that, Nancy? Oh, birthday cake. Yum. Oh, oh birthday cake. That looks awesome. The paintings look so pretty. They do. They look really nice. All right. So um, I would like to start adding some green. Are you ready to mix uh, green tones? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Blue and yellow. I might, I might switch to my big brush. So if you have this brush or a larger one than we were just using, I'm um, going to cover a little bit more um, quickly. So if you want to use your larger brush, you're more than welcome to. But you can do this with a medium as well. And All I right. promise if you um, are finished <laughs> asking questions, if you will mute yourself again when she's teaching. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Not that we don't want to chat with you. It's just uh, there's so much noise when everybody has their mic on. But thank you. But yes, feel free if you have a question um, or you want to give out a shout or if you have just something you want to say, please do. Just unmute yourself. Okay. So I'm sure that you remember in elementary school how to make green, yellow, and blue. Super easy. Um, so I'm going to take my big brush here. I'm going to stand up so that I can get some leverage going here. And I've got my yellow and blue next to each other. Look at that. Ooh, nice, beautiful green. See how dark that is? Um, so I'm going to start off with kind of a 50-50 mix. 
I like this tone here. Um, and then everywhere I have white, I'm going to start going in and covering up where those white um, lines are. Mine ended up being very layered, so it's got almost like a cake. That's what it reminds me of. Um, there's just lots of layers in there. They're not exactly the same thickness across, but there's definitely that going on, and I'm fine with that. Um, so if yours is that way, or if yours is more, you know, uh, circular, that's okay. It all works. So here I'm just going to start adding in the green. So see how dark this is? I'm not going to use too much. I'm actually going to lighten this up um, with some white after I apply this first coat of green here. So I'm not using a lot of paint. Please don't go too crazy with this green because it's going to be very, very heavy and dark. So, I mean, you probably only need to dip your um, brush into this dark green once or twice, and that will get a lot covered. So I'm not covering all of the white. I want to leave some of that for my lighter tones. Just kind of filling in in between. And I'm feeling like some areas I could go in with my smaller brush, maybe the medium. But for big areas, look how nice that covers and how quickly. So um, up at the top here where my sky starts to meet the earth a little bit, I can use this dark green very, very lightly to really close that transition up, right? So if you see any little white um, canvas uh, areas that need paint and you can cover it up with that green, this is where you can do that. And I don't want to make a line straight across. I want this to feel very organic and natural. Um, so don't make a straight line across. Build small mounds. There's faraway trees, hills, valleys. Like it's all very, very um, textured and lots of peaks and little hilly areas there. That's what you really want. And we'll hold it back, make sure it's good. I like it. Do you need a couple more minutes to do this? Thumbs up if you do. All right, looks like mostly everybody. All right, so let's just go ahead. We'll wait a couple minutes and then I'll show you how to create that lighter green as a highlight.
All right, so um, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna start adding in some lighter green tones over my dark green. Um, what you wanna do is basically you're gonna mix your blue and your yellow, um, but this time I want you to add more yellow and a little bit of white, all right? So depending on how much white you add, that's gonna determine how light it is. Um, and so I want you to just, you know, play around with it, see what you like. You could even use a couple of different um, light green tones. Um, and so what I'd like you to do at this point is fill in most of this white that's left with your light green. Um, when we start adding in, um, you know, when we start to add in maybe some like super, super dark uh, green tones, you'll fill all of the gaps in. So right now, let's just cover like 90% of whatever's left with the lighter green. So here's my palette. I'm gonna go ahead and mix green. I'm gonna use lots of yellow, tiny bit of white. So a little bit avocado-y, I like that bit of a tropical lime green, I like that, more white. And then, perfect, I love this. I'm gonna go ahead and fill in most of this white. Now I'm using my medium brush, but whatever you're comfortable with, go for it. And I'll hold this up closer to my camera so that you could see if you need to. I hope you're painting your edges as well. Um, if you haven't, don't worry, like after the class, you can, you know, keep going. Um, it's kind of hard to break away from painting. You get so entranced by it and it's really difficult to stop. So that's okay. If you wanna take extra time and fine tune it after the class is over, go for it. There's paintings that I have that I've been working on for years. I'm not sure when I'll finish them I, or if I ever will. I just like to work on them little bits and pieces here and there.
So now what I'm doing is I've uh, taken my green and I've added a lot of white to it. And now I'm just going in very lightly. I'm using my largest brush and I'm using a very small amount of paint. And I'm just going in with a very light, light green. And I'm just filling in any weird gaps that were left or covering up any patterns that I might have accidentally started to create. So this is the point where you want to just get everything covered. No spots left on your canvas. You don't have to use the light green. If you really love the pink, maybe you want to use that. Just, I caution you, if you do go like on the opposite end of the spectrum, like you're in cools now, if you start to go into the warm colors, be careful because if you put red paint over wet green, it's going to turn brown. So just be careful that you don't muddy your colors up. So in acrylic, you have to either, you know, blend properly or wait until it dries and then you'll get the colors that you want. They'll, they'll be nice and vibrant. All right, I'm just gonna hold mine up and give you all a few minutes to get your canvas covered. Wow, beautiful. Emily, that looks great. Good job. Very nice. Wow, beautiful job. Look at those blocks. That looks really, really nice. Love that. Thank you. Marilyn, very cool. Love the contrast. Oh, wow, that looks great. Look at your bright colors. I like your dark blue sky. Look at that contrast. Looks really nice. Oh, nice, Danielle. Very cool. They look almost, they have a very cloud-like um, feeling to them. It's very uh, dreamy. Thank you. Yeah. Nice, Cynthia. I love that bright, um, that very deep purplish pink in the center that my eye goes right to that. I like that. Vanessa, doesn't it feel good to see faces that we recognize? I miss our customers so much. Yes, I know, me too. Can't wait for things to go back to normal and people to come back in and just miss that human to human connection. Zoom is nice though, I'm telling you, it's been like a way of life and I'm grateful to it, but nothing quite like seeing you in person, definitely. Me too. It's forced me to learn some new things. So I'm, yeah. gonna, I'm really going to love to see people come back. Yeah. We're so blessed and fortunate to have everyone be so supportive. Yep. I feel like this has pushed us all. Um, and we've all grown in one way or another. Um, and yeah, learning something new, even if it's like, you know, a new recipe or how to budget better or how to zoom meeting and you know all these things are important and good that we adapt and and grow under any circumstance makes us appreciate the people that we may have taken for granted before yes absolutely 
Speaking of appreciating people, I just want to uh, point out again, if you uh, are enjoying the class, please, um, I really encourage you to send a tip to Vanessa on Venmo. Um, I know yeah. one of those things I'm just learning about too, this, through this pandemic. Uh, her little address, or I don't know if it's an address or a handle or ID, I don't know what you call that, but you can see it in the bottom of her screen. It's at Vanessa hyphen Lavelle, L, uh, capital L A, capital V E L L E. Thank you. Thanks, Nancy. I appreciate that. Well, I appreciate you doing the class. You're Thanks. awesome. And, and for sticking around and being so great to us at Sipping and Painting Hamden. Thank you. It's an honor and a privilege. So, thank you. All right. We're going to be uh, doing trees here shortly, everyone. So, get ready for that. Um, we do need the background to dry. So, this is a another small break. Um, and this is an important break because you really don't want any of this to be wet when you start adding your trees. So let's take a, a hard 10 minute break for this, okay? Um, so finish up your final colors and then let your painting dry, all right? Um, if, you're, if you are heavy handed, which I love when I see artists that use a lot of paint, I think it's a nice look. Um, however, it does take a long time to dry. So if you have a blow dryer in your bedroom that you want to bring down and, and, you know, dry your painting faster, put it in front of a, um, a fan or hold it and wave it around outside if you want. Uh, that will also help it to dry quickly. So let's take a 10 minute break starting right now. Okay. Also, this is a good time to refresh your drink, use the restroom, clean your jar of water. It's probably a muddy mess, so get some fresh water while you're up. And if you want to unmute your video and say hello to anyone else, please feel free. Vanessa, can I ask you a question? Sure. How do you keep your kitchen so clean? <laughs> well, it's white, so I have to, otherwise everything shows. But thank you. I did clean it especially well tonight, so it's for beautiful. all of you guests. Vanessa, if you're still there, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Um, since we're learning about paints together, do you think that if we used a phthalo blue instead of cobalt blue that it would have made a brighter purple? Uh, I think yes, and also using um, a magenta red okay. um, will definitely make a better purple. Yes. Got it. So I used, I used red red instead yeah. of magenta red, and uh, that's really great feedback, and I will uh, start to use magenta. Magenta starts to blend. If you add white, it turns pink, right? Yeah. So um, I wasn't really sure if that would be, I mean, like a, a warm pink instead of a cool pink, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I like magenta and ultramarine together make a really beautiful purple. Should I do ultramarine? Well, okay. All right. Yeah. The actual ultramarine. But it's more of a purpley blue. So yeah, phthalo, ultramarine, both of those look good. So we'll, uh, the next kits we do, we'll try phthalo blue and uh, magenta for the red. Yeah, that sounds good. Right, thank you very much. I'm going to take my dog outside for just a moment while we're on break. So I will be right back. This is my dog. <laughs> Say hi, Bailey. He's so cute. <laughs> you have fun playing with T'Challa. <laughs> son's puppy. She's an old girl. She's almost 16 years old.
Hey, Derek. Who said that? <laughs> it's Nancy. Oh, hey, Nancy. <laughs> How's it going? It's going good. How are y'all doing? We're doing well. This is Vanessa's husband, everyone. Well, those paintings look pretty good. Thanks. We're looking forward to seeing you in the studio sometime when all this is over. Me too. Hopefully soon. Definitely. So if I could, while you guys are finishing that up, I, I just wanted to show you a couple of things if I could. Um, yeah, you should be able to see me now. So uh, for those of you who have not yet been in the studio since we've been closed, I just want to tell you we are selling a few things that if you're in the area and would like to stop by, we have these face mask kits. And basically it's five, you get five white cotton three ply face masks. They look like this. They're soft cotton and they have ear loops. And so you get five of them in this kit along with paints, brushes, and a palette and instructions. Uh, and it's for making your own face mask kit, face masks. Uh, so you can decorate your own. We had one family um, who did the cutest thing, just adorable. Uh, they made all five of the masks into animal faces. And um, boy, it was super cute, like a dog and a cat and a pig and I don't know, super cute. People painted florals on them, all kinds of things. So that's one thing we're selling. Those kits are $35 for five masks. We also have the plain white face masks that are $5. We have these black face masks. One side is plain. These are, again, three-ply cotton. And the other side says Sipping and Painting Hamden. Those are $3. And then we have some hand-painted masks. And this one is a sample. They're Monet-inspired tie-dye. So they have those Monet colors, um, but they're tie-dyed and they're just kind of pretty. And we have these for seven dollars. And uh, if you get three, there you can get three for fifteen. So we have these in the studio every day. It's, it's helping us pay our rent so we can stay open. We also have those disposable paper ones uh, for two dollars each. So I'm here every day from three to six p.m. And I'm here on the weekends from ten to three. And selling these masks to try to pay the rent. So we really appreciate your support on that area. If you need masks, you know where to go. Uh, also, I wanted to thank everyone who did put um, a tip on the support your local small business uh, area. Thank you so much for that, um, or you know whatever our contribution. And we just really thank you for staying with us and helping us stay afloat while we are um, uh, while we have to have the restrictions. So thank you, everyone. We love you. You are. You are wonderful. Our staff is wonderful. And I feel very blessed and grateful. Thank you. I second that. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. So I just dropped my entire canister into my paint palette. <laughs> so this is why we wear aprons and put plastic down because accidents happen. So what I was going to do is if you have some white paint, um, if your palette is a total mess like mine is, this is what my palette now looks like, um, you may want to uh, grab some fresh white paint, okay? And you don't need a lot. I would say maybe like a tablespoon um, to start with for the trees, okay? So not a lot, but enough to, um, to do about five or six trees. So a tablespoon is enough. And I'm just going to add a little bit of white to my foil here. Right about there. That's all I need. And make sure that my brush is clean. I'm going to use my medium brush. 
I don't know if anybody's still howling at eight o'clock, but I did go outside with my dog and um, caught the howling. Raise your hand if people are still howling in your neighborhoods. All right, I will howl until I don't know when. I'll probably be the one that just keeps howling even long after the coronavirus is then gone. I love it, my daughter loves it. She's nine and she looks forward to getting on her bike and howling as loud as she can and it's just the most awesome thing. All right, so treats. Let's look at our original here. I'm just gonna hold this up for a moment. Let's study it together, class. All right, so we have, would you say one, two, three, four, five white trees, maybe six. I think there's one there, okay. So six white trees, and then look at the other ones in the back. So there's some black trees in the background. They're the same trees, they're just further back. So they're, they're casting shadows, right? So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the white ones first, and then we'll fill in the gaps with the shadowy trees in the back. So take a look at this and if you want to unmute your speakers, what, what do you see? What stands out about these trees? Anyone? It could be anything. No branches. Very good. Excellent. Yes, we are not going to fuss with branches. Um, we are just focusing on um, the trunks themselves. That is what, you know, gives it that really clean, almost like a modern painting look. We're not gonna mess with branches today. Excellent observation. Does anybody else see anything? Um, there is no right or wrong answer. I just wanna see what you see. It looks to me like they're birch because they have the peeling white bark. Absolutely, yes. Birch, aspen, um, yes, you're right. So these are, they're white and we will do a little black flex on them. Um, excellent. So yes, they're very distinct, very native to Colorado. Good job. Uh, let's do one more if anybody else sees anything that they like about it or that stands out to them. So maybe a little bit of brown. A little bit of brown, yeah. So what you're seeing, and that's a very good uh, call, we need to add some kind of a shadow in there, okay? so. We have birch trees, no branches, uh, shadows. You see a little bit of brown or gray. Um, also, another thing is that there are different thicknesses. And look at this guy. Sometimes trees grow two trunks out of one root ball, right? So that's kind of another way to make it unique and just to break up the same. So you have like just one tree, one tree, one tree. Oh, look at this guy. He's like two and one. So this is really nice to do in art um, because it just breaks up that um, monotonous pattern, okay? So this is really important. I would definitely add this characteristic to your trees. All right, so let's go ahead and, and get started. Um, I've got my fresh white on my medium brush. My painting is totally dry. You can put your hand across it if you want to make sure it's dry. If it's still a little bit wet, you may want to just hold out just for a couple more minutes and just watch. All right, so I'm going to start off with that, um, that V-shaped uh, tree trunk that's got another one coming out. It actually starts about maybe close to the center, so it doesn't go to the bottom, to the top. It's about right here. That's where I'm going to place him. This is also a great way to cover up something if you're not 100% happy with it. You can absolutely cover it up. So um, I, I like this spot right here. He's gonna live right here. And I'm just gonna take my medium brush and then press and push upward and then come back down. So now I've made a beautiful long trunk. And then over here is gonna be the other trunk coming out from the same area. And if you want, you can go back over it, make sure that your paint's nice and solid. Don't worry about making these super straight. Trees are not straight lines. They have some curve to them. They're constantly battling wind and elements. So they're 
battle worn. Okay, they're not perfect straight buildings. They have a lot of text. They have a lot of character, um, and they're bendy. So, go with that. All right. Now that I've gotten my first uh, set there, I'm going to start adding in the rest. And you can hold your brush. I'll show you this. You can hold your brush up and down straight. Let me see if you can see my bristles. So I can either hold it vertically or horizontally. And that's going to give me a totally different thickness. Okay. So if you paint this way, it's going to be thick. That's going to be thin. Try it both ways. You want to do a baby tree? You could just make it nice and skinny, depending on how you hold it and how hard down, how hard you push down on your brush. So that looks like your big brush. Uh, this, is, big brush? this is my medium. Ah, it looks bigger. Okay. My medium okay. brush? Yeah, good question. You could use your big brush, but it might be a little, you know, your trees you might be For some reason, it looks really big. So I was like, uh oh. That's okay. No, that's that's okay. This is my big brush. So this guy's. Okay, that looks bigger. Okay, got it. Thank you. You're welcome. I just realized your paintings are horizontal and mine's vertical. Oh, that's okay. That's okay? Yeah. It's Maybe so much. just less than mine. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. You know, it's funny you say that. Uh, I recall once at Sipping, I did the same thing. I was teaching a class and I started to paint it horizontal when it was supposed to be vertical, but I had already like started and it was already established. So I was like, no, nah, let's just go with it. You know, it happens. It still works. All right, uh, give me a thumbs up if you need more time. All right, a couple of you, all right. Okay, no worries. Let's uh, give you another couple minutes to get your trees on there. All right, so um, on the original, there's some pine trees that are sort of hiding behind these guys. So if you want to add those in, I'm just going to do it really quickly. And I don't want to focus too much on them because they're not part of the uh, main uh, sort of focal point here. So what I'm doing is I'm using my smallest brush that I have and some blue and a little bit of white. So this is almost gonna just like blend in with your sky. And um, I'm just going to make a couple of small far away pine trees by just creating a little top 
And then I just go side to side and just kind of make like a triangle, like kind of a loose little triangle. And you can come in, kind of give them some nice little bristles there. I'm only going to do, I'm going to say I'm going to do three. Maybe I'll put one right here. This is a skinny one here. It's kind of a baby one. Nice little top. And then maybe one guy right here. I don't want to overdo this. It's very subtle. Oh, what the heck. I'm going to put one right here too. Just because I have so much paint on my brush, I want to use it up. Very, very subtle. Classic moment until I dipped the non-brush end into the blue. <laughs> that's all right. That's funny. That's how we use um, the brush to paint stars. You yeah, wrong. Yeah, these are good brushes. Yeah. Who else did it too? <laughs> hey, I'm sorry. I, I, I missed how you did the tree. Oh, the yeah. Tree. Yeah. I'll sure. So I take my smallest brush and I make a very light blue, or not, I shouldn't say light blue. It's kind of like a little darker than your sky. So that's a good gauge. Like however dark your sky is, make this blue slightly darker. I'll just put one right here. And then I just kind of make, imagine a triangle. One, two, three. Here, let me scooch it up a little. One, two, three. And then you kind of just go back and forth. Oh, well, that's really cool. Uh-oh. We're good. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> All right, no worries. Don't feel bad. Spills happen. All right. I'll give you guys a few minutes to get your trees and then I'll move on to the next step. I'm just going to refill my water. I'll be right back. All right, so now that we have our um, background trees done, what I wanna do now is add in some of the detail to my birch trees or my aspen trees. So I'm going to use my medium brush and I've already cleaned it off. So it's nice and clean and nice and flat. You wanna try to get your brush as flat as you possibly can so that it's not um, frayed out because we need to make it nice nice straight little birch lines okay so I'm just gonna okay so I'm gonna just show you um, close up here so let's imagine that my tree is uh, right here and then what I want to do is you can make two different brush strokes here you can either come across like this I hope you could see this but if you drag it with just a small amount of paint you're gonna get this really nice, um, dusty, um, weathered look. And then you can also hold your brush this way and horizontally make a few lines like this. But don't put a lot of paint on your brush for this step. Um, otherwise, you're gonna completely darken up your tree. It's almost like you're just shading like this. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start working on that. So small amount of paint, that's 
very important. And, and also don't overdo it. You really want the tree to remain white and it's just got a few little black scratches on it. I hope you can see that okay. If you, if you kind of hold your brush, press, and then sort of flick it outward, almost like you're sweeping like a broom, that's kind of the, the technique there. And I'm just gonna go random. And notice I, I haven't dipped my brush into paint a second time. This is just one um, grab of paint. It's enough to do several trees. And I'll hold it, hold it up close so you can see some of that detail. If you accidentally go too um, hard with your black and there's just way too much on there, remember this is acrylic paint. You can um, let it dry and then go back over it with some white and just sort of reverse erase some of that dark um, line work. Um, so don't worry too much about that. And you could even do a few of the uh, strokes in a dark, dark gray if you wanted to. Um, I really like the contrast of the black and white, so I like to have mine be a little bit more clean, um, but there's lots of ways to do this and have a nice um, result. All right, would you like a couple more minutes class to finish up your trees? Thumbs up, all right.
Okay, so the last step is going to be adding in the, uh, the really nice dark trees in the background. Let me grab my painting here. Okay, so all of these dark trees in between the white, see? And look, there's different thicknesses. Very thick tree, that's a little skinny one, a little skinny one. So variation. Also, some of them are, are their trunks start here, others start down here. So variation in thickness and placement. Also, you can take your black paint, and if you want to, you can sort of create subtle outlines on your white. Don't outline your entire white tree with black. It will diminish your artwork. If you do outline, just do a very subtle, maybe one side or one area. Um, one, of, one of my art teachers when I was in college, when we were taking a life painting class, she had us all paint a mouth with teeth and didn't really give us much instruction. She said, all right, I'm gonna give you three colors, paint a mouth with teeth. Half of the class painted the teeth with black outlines around them and the other half didn't. And that's the correct way because if you were to do a painting and outline the teeth, it would look awful, right? So that was a lesson to us when you're painting something, outline the entire thing, just give it a very subtle um, definition. Um, so that your artwork doesn't end up looking cartoonish or, um, you know, exaggerated. So keep that in mind. Don't outline the whole tree, just a subtle stroke here and there, and that's perfect. So I will demonstrate. I'm going to use my small brush and black. Now I like to add water to my black because I like it thin. So add a few drops of water to the corner of where your black paint is and get it nice and thin. And I'm just gonna come up. So I'm gonna show you what I mean about, I'm not gonna outline the whole tree. I'm just going to create a nice little thick to thin line. Maybe I skip an area like that. I'll do it again over here. Again, make sure that your paint is thin and your paintbrush, look at that point on my brush, nice and sharp. Create a little bit of a line there, skip an area, little line here. Vanessa, can you show them how to uh, sharpen your, uh, your brush end? Yeah. On your plate, thank you. So I'm going to Take my brush, here's my black paint. Let's see if I can get a good angle here. Okay, so I dip it into the black. This is where the water is. And then I spin my brush, spin my brush and then kind of lift it off. And then it cleans that point really nicely. See, nice and pointy. Almost like a liquid eyeliner. If you've ever tried to use liquid eyeliner, it's real, real, really gel-like and very fine. See, that's what you want. Once your liquid eyeliner starts to get gummy and gloppy, it goes in the trash, right? So you wanna make sure that your black paint when you're doing fine lines is very, very thin. And that's how you're gonna get these really nice clean lines. And pointy brush. Not a lot of pressure, don't push hard. You just kind of want to graze it on there. And don't worry about making them straight. I'd rather you make the line um, squiggly than perfectly straight and too thick. Just nice, easy lines like that. And your paint will tell you when it starts to need water. Just like your house plants tell you when they need water, your paint starts to feel a little off when it's thirsty. Okay. 
this up for you. Okay, so the last step is adding in those trees in between, those dark black trees. Also, you want to add some shadows in your um, other trees. So let me show you how to do that. But we're going to continue with that same brush. Um, I'm adding more water to my black. And again, getting my small brush nice and pointy. And then I'm just going to pick areas where I feel like that tree should live. I feel like this is a good area here, maybe a couple in here. So just kind of feel it out and, and give them proper spacing. And so the way I did that, let me show you again. Um, I like to make my trees kind of thin and then thicker at the bottom because the trunk is always going to be a little bit thicker at the bottom, right? Otherwise your tree would topple over. So maybe I start the top I press and then I twist my brush as I come down I'm twisting it and then I stop at different uh, points maybe this little guy is going to come down a little further how many do you add I mean you could do five you could do six whatever fits don't force them if they start to look too crowded, we don't want that, right? We want them to be sort of spaced out in a, a happy way. Happy trees here. And maybe a couple of these do have a branch showing, but be careful with branches, okay? Don't make a plus sign. They need to come out at an angle too. So I'll, I'll demonstrate a little branch here. Um, let's give, let's give this guy a branch. So I would start about here and then I go up. That branch is going up towards the sky, not out to the side. Maybe a little happy guy here. All right, once you have all of your little branches and your um, you know, dark trees painted on, 
Uh, now you want to give your trees some shadow. You want to make this all sort of like believable, right? Um, you can use solid black. However, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a very dark green. So here's where you get to like kind of use up all your paint and not waste it, <laughs> hopefully. Um, I'm mixing green with my yellow and blue. And then I'm going to take some black and throw that in there. Now you've got forest green. And let's put water in there, it's a little thick. So with this forest green, um, what I want to do is, oh, and that's almost black, but it's just a little bit lighter. I'm just creating a shadow underneath my trees. Don't go too crazy here, just make it a little subtle. So where that tree kind of jumps into the floral area, we want a little bit of that shadowy feel. <clears throat> and I'm basically like sketching it on there. I'm not really making straight lines. I'm almost using the same technique that I use to make my flowers, kind of dotting them on there. Super chill. Very loose hand. At this point, if you've had a glass of wine or two, you're feeling that loose brush stroke, right? That's good. Right there. Pretty happy with that. Um, if you see some areas that you want to add a little shadow to with this paint color, you can. But I just caution you it can um, overtake, so just be very um, conservative with it. Don't, don't go too crazy with it, just a little. And actually what I'm doing is I see a couple of blank spots here, some white showing through, so I'm just covering that up. Then I put my brush down. When I'm finished, I take a few steps back. And just observe if I need to change anything or add um, whatever else you want on there. But that's the final step. How's everybody feeling? How do you like your paintings? Thumbs up if you like them. Good. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Well, let's show them. Everybody hold your painting up. Oh my gosh, these look awesome. Wow. Beautiful.